Yo, pardon, on the last episode, it was a typo with the website. Here's the name of the website right here, archive.store, two A's. Log on, subscribe, shop. Also, if you want to hear the raw and uncut shit, here's the Patreon. We getting active with that during this week. Yo, shout out to all the kids and the teens that got their clothes laid out right now for tomorrow. First day back to school. Yo, leading up to back to school was super intense when it was time to go back to school shopping. Everything revolved around talking to your friends on the phone, seeing what they was buying, what they got already, what they was wearing, how y'all was going to kill the hallway when y'all came to school the next day. Shout out to all the parents that's out there doing that last minute shopping too and doing it proud and happy to live through your kids and revisit a moment when you used to be on the same type of shit. Shout out to the parents that's mad they doing it too. But yo, back to school? (sighs) Y'all would have been on right now. I would have either been, I would have still been outside, right? I would have probably just finished getting my hair cut. And been talking to my friends like, yo, let's go to the mall real quick and just grab something last minute. Nine times out of ten. Or we would have been in the city. Because there's definitely times where we did all our back to school shopping in New York. But that's when we was getting our own money. I'll get into that on another episode. But, yo, when it was time to go back to school, what were you? Were you one of the kids that wore your shit the first day? You know the first couple of days is like half days for those first like three days because school always started like in the middle of the week it was never on a Monday the first day back to school or did you wait to that following week to kill them or did you just give them piece by piece here and there and mix it in with other shit that you had and what I mean by mixed it in like you might come to school right and be like boom all right I'm not gonna come too crazy the first day I might wear some new kicks and sweatpants some shit like that Then I might hit you with a pair of kicks that's still fairly new that I got throughout the summer and shit. Then I might come with something else new so you can stretch your shit a little more. Did you do that? I'm not going to hold you. When it came to ninth grade, first day, freshman, yo, now I had to throw that shit on. My father had um, gave me some bread and he drove me because I wasn't old enough to drive. And we went to New York, 125th, 145th. So this is how I got cool with um, Ali and Hassan in uh, blue jeans on 145th. This is when blue jeans was where uh, it was KP Kong, then it turned into blue jeans. It was on Broadway across the street from GoPro, not where it's at now on the corner. But those guys remember me from back then going school shopping. So I had a bunch of shit and then I was getting shit throughout the summer that I really was was trying to save to make my mark as a freshman. So yeah, freshman year I went I had to go crispy. Um sophomore year, I I I hit him with the gradual shit. Like I wore something, then I did and then I wore junior year. Shit changed junior year. Um That's when I got into it with my pops. He ain't want to buy me some shit. I had some of youth money too. So I had some some shit put away. But he was acting funny. So that's when I took matters into my own hand. And it was like, yeah, I'm not asking nobody for nothing else no more. Started getting my own shit or whatever. I would still get shit from my parents here and there. But they really had to get me shit. As long as I had somewhere to lay my head and eat at night. Everything else I did myself. And then senior year, yeah, we went kind of crazy that year too because we was all getting money. So we came in first day with that shit on. But we wore white tees with with new jeans and, and crispy kicks and shit like that. It's all about being comfortable in your own skin too because we talking about 1996 with the white t-shirt shit. This is before they made them long galaxy t-shirts. We was buying packs of Fruit of the Loom or Hanes t-shirts to stretch our shit. And you know, it'd be funny, little, little snickers amongst the crowd. Like, yo, why y'all niggas is wearing white t-shirts? And it's like, yo, bro, you just had that Hilfiger t-shirt on this week and twice last week. 
So the white t-shirt was a way to stretch your gear out. Of course, there was no crisp line down the middle. It was all it was that it was all about being comfortable with who you were. But after the little snickers and the shit that people were saying, the chicks gravitated towards it and understood like, oh nah, them niggas is wearing crisp white t shirts. That's not no dingy white t shirt. And we was just on some fly shit anyway. Um which leads me to some shit I seen today that I had to comment about where the guy was just he posted a reel saying that people didn't wear new balance. Only five seven fours in two thousand, and it's like, yo, where are you from? Ninety six. I had five seven six. The made in England shits. Niggas that know me know them shits was my favorite. I had gray nine nine nines too. Them shits cost like one forty one fifty back then, and I purposely got them because they was a flock. The gray was just unbelievable on them shits, and then I was just thinking different, and them shits was priced a little more. Than the mics back then, so it's like pretty much a calm flex. Like, I right, yeah, I got these on, but y'all all got on the same Jordans, and my shit costs more. Even though the price point wasn't always the main thing, but back then when you young and you had some shit that cost a decent amount, yeah, that shit was a calm flex. Yeah, that back to school shit though. Yeah, you got that shit on during that first week, and them girls is paying attention. Your confidence is to the ceiling. You walking them home from school, running your game down, trying to bag the new joint. Don't let it be a new joint in school or you the new kid in school. Oh, man. Yo. What a time. What a time. Yo, what I missed too that you don't see now, it was always a crazy back to skip. It would... Yo, what you don't, you know what I miss that you don't really see now is the crazy back to school sales. I mean, you see them, but you don't see them like before. Like Foot Locker will run a commercial, I tell you about all the back to school shit with the sale attached to it. You look in your local newspaper, all the mom and pop stores is running the ad for back to school. Your favorite mom and pop in your neighborhood got a sign that they made in the window about back to school. Or the layaway for back to school. You don't really see all that shit right now. Yo, that back to school shit was in East Bay Magazine. Back to school sale. Like, yo, that shit was an intense time. That was a way for a lot of spots to get a lot of money. And that was a way for you to go viral outside. See, now it's different, right? These kids could take a picture and post the shit ASAP. You're going to go viral all over the fucking world. But back then, it was a little more, it took a little more to go viral, right? Yeah, you can have a viral moment with a fit. But to make your mark, you had to consistently put on. Yeah, it had to be some consistency with your shit, whether it be you was the kid known for always having the latest shit that came out, whether it was sneakers, clothes, or you was just a kid that knew how to put some shit together crazy and you found dope shit that people really wasn't up on. So like somebody like, like I got cool with a couple kids that came from New York. So they was always shopping in the city. They not going to the mall. I was lucky enough to know a lot about New York from my older brother and then other people from my neighborhood with us living close. But a lot of kids' parents was on some shit like, nah, that shit too dangerous over there. You can't go over there alone. Some niggas would sneak and go anyway, but like I said, I learned that shit at a young age, like Delancey Street, six, seven years old, leather bomber on, me and my brother. Got one because he got one, or um, going to get the starter coats, mad shit, mad different shit, just Harlem Week in general, going to fucking Copeland's or Sylvia's and shit, like, it was, it was a lot of shit that I was taught from my father and my brother that trickled down to once I was a decent age, I was able to go to New York without them and shit like that. So when you knew how to go other places to discover shit, you was always going to be ahead of the curve. Then once the outlets came into play and you had a, a ride to get to like Reading, PA, 
or the Woodbury to tear up the Polo and the Nordica outlet? Oh my God, and the Nike outlet. Because now how we see Nike stores in our community, it wasn't like that back then. You had to travel. You was going to Redding. You was going to Woodbury, uh, upstate New York, some shit like that to find it. So the shit we had to do to go viral was crazy. And remember, it was no phone with no maps in the phone. It wasn't MapQuest yet. Yo, it was all off. You had a physical map or somebody just told you some shit. You jotted it down. And as you was going there, you started asking directions as you got closer. But speaking of back to school, right? My little cousin, he was at the uh, meetup of shit two weeks ago. He's going to sixth grade. Yo, he got his shit laid out since yesterday for the first three days of school. Him and his friends been on the phone, texting and all that. They got their shit together. It was actually a proud moment for me as an older cousin to see. But I mean, the fruit don't fall too far from the tree. His mom is in the shit. You know what I mean? Everybody that he grew up around so far in his life is in the shit. Even since a baby he had. Massive shit. He always was into keeping his sneakers fairly clean. Now it's like you don't have to say nothing. All his shit stay in good condition. He don't really fuck it up like that. But yeah, shout out to all the kids getting ready for back to school tomorrow, man. Yo. This shit just made me... That shit brings back mad memories. All the girls... Shout out to all the girls I grew up with. Who parents were late and always had open crib and there'd just be a bunch of us in there hanging around after school. Oh my God, yo. The times, the times, the times. But, um, yeah, man. See, for me back to school, I was able to coast all the way into the new year. And I'm gonna tell you why. Some of y'all heard this shit before. September, back to school. November, my birthday. December is Christmas. January, income tax. So if you knew how to finesse your shit, you could pretty much coast to close to Easter. And that shit was a tradition for me to get kicks on Easter. Like, I remember when I was little... They used to make me like dress up a little bit and they would do the church thing. And then my father was like, yo, you could pick whatever you want for now on. Like, whatever you want to get, you don't got to dress up. Yo, that, I love that shit. I got the chalk line, fucking uh, Jordan jacket. That's on Easter. We in front of my grandparents' house and shit. That's Easter Sunday. I had that shit on. Never forget. I wish I still had that fucking jacket. I don't know what happened to it. It's another thing, during them times, right, it wasn't about collecting. I mean, even for me, early 2000s, it wasn't about that. Shout out to those that was ahead of the curve and thought to keep a lot of their old shit, to archive it and still have, because history tends to repeat itself, right? But then you got certain people that save everything and then pop shit. So from the outside looking in, right, people would think, because I don't post a lot of my shit, do I got 100 plus kicks? Fucking yeah, absolutely. Do I wear all of them all the time? No, no. It all depends how I'm feeling if I want to dig some shit out or when I think of some. Sometimes I have to see some shit and be like, oh, yeah, I forgot about this. Then I'll wear it. Then other times I just don't even be beat, like... It's not like back in the day when you outside all day. If I was outside in the corner and the block was popping or we was in a park heavy or, or chilling on the block, then, yeah, I would be backing all of that shit out because you're constantly seen. Right now, I'm not outside amongst people every day to be seen like that, to just keep backing different shit out day after day after day. So, you know, you got certain people that, that's how they run, they, they handle, they page, and they show different shit every day or talk about different shit or show how they got the same thing from different years. This is a public service announcement solely to those people that pop shit and like to say certain shit. 
Respectfully, I didn't either. That wasn't how I came into this shit or how I even thought of this shit. I was, it, it was a different time. I was into a different thing. So for me, it was like, I, I could wake up right now and call born and be like, yo, yo, last night was crazy. Da, 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 da. Yeah, word it here be like, yeah. I'm like, yo, I want to I wanna smack some new kicks on today. Let's go to the mall. I'll go to the mall and I know what's out. Let's say a pair of bowls is out or uh, white Carolina blue Air Force is low top. It's like, oh, nah, I'm getting those. It's nice outside. I'm smacking them on today. I'm going to go get some polo sports shit, a uh, navy blue Yankee. I'm going to wear it today. Then I'm going to just push that shit to the side. Probably not wear it again, maybe once or twice again for the summer. Then I'm going to give it away. Like, that's that's the type of shit that I did. I didn't save my shit to think what the future held or or think it was going to be a platform to sell shit. Even when the platforms was here to sell shit, I came home from jail 2013 and gave away 40, 50 pair of sneakers that nothing was wrong with. Just cause, cause it was like, yo, I did that shit, been there, done that, fuck that shit, time to do some new shit. But you know, this all goes under that same headline or whatever you want to call it of, yo, I'm not you. <laughs> yo, we all do different things. We all come from different walks of life and we do our shit different. So, you know, this guy, he, he, he kind of, I took it as a shot. It was a shot. He reposts some shit that I found that I put at the end of um my slide for the recap of the pop-up that I had. And he put Q. So basically, I put the shit that I put up was I'm part of a generation that's seen the Jordans go from 120 to 220. And he was like, Q, I come from a generation where they went from $65 to $100 in one year. So I was going to be ignorant, but then I said to myself, nah. Then I just put up, what's even cuter is, I come from that $65 generation too. And I had just learned how to tie my shoes. Kindergarten to be exact. Yeah, I had bread once in 85, 86, kindergarten. Facts. So it's like, you know, people try to take little shots, but it's like, yo. It was funny to see that actual person take a shot you know he was more like he's more like a calm and, and collective guy he's older too by the way he definitely got me by a few years she 89 he was in high he got me by a lot of years actually but i get it i respect it it was a good shot but I'm afraid I'm a part of the same generation, man. By default. So, I'm going to give y'all a back to school highlight. 96. September. A day before school. So, prior to that, Iron Man was out. And my, my friend, we was getting money. I'm going to just put it to you like that. Like, we was getting money. I was I wasn't as disciplined as him and what I mean by that he's the type of person that would save the shit out of his money. So, I I could recall a time where he had new shit in the house and he would wear these old beat up constructs to school and be like, "Yo, fuck that. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't wearing none of this new shit I got until I got me 10, 15,000." We kids you know what I mean? We 15 years old, right? That's a lot of money for a 15 year old, 95, right? So the girls used to laugh. Like some girls he would get into it with. Be, or some niggas would be like, yo, tell your man, take his boots off or whatever. I'm like, yo, y'all just don't understand. So when he would get into it with certain people and shit, he'll come to school the next day, seven, eight thousand on him. Bitch, I got more money than your than your parents and shit like that. Like, yeah, he was coming like that. So, you know, he come from a, a, a legacy of hustlers. Like, his mom got money. He come from that lineage. So, certain shit he was seasoning by default, right? So, 
You know when Ghost said that shit on Motherless Child about the King Tut piece, his thing was, yo, I'm going to Black Man Jewelers, which is in the Mark 125, and he was going by the King Tut on a Cuba to come back to school in. He was going to spend like four or 5000 on this shit with kids, 15 years old. This is the mind state that we had at that time because of what we was into, right? Then last minute, he was like, yo, fuck that. I ain't going to get that chain. Yo, let's, let's go shopping. Mind you, I was getting money throughout the summer. I was fucking mine up as I got it. Shit, I went to um the Apollo. That August is seen hove and big. I had the Wally's on, the guests with the low t-shirt, low hat. But I was also buying shit for school to put up for back to school. But in the mix of that, like, we hustling. So it's like, all right, fuck it. I'll go with you. I'll buy some shit, too, and I'll buy some weed. He went dummy. We took the bus to the city. We jumped off the bus. We ain't even fuck with the train back then. We jumped in the cab, took the cab to 45th. We go in KP Con from the rip. He copped the chuckers, two pair, black and brown. He copped the North Face book bag, ASAP. This shit was like two, two something out of KB Con, black shit. Um, we get, we went and got some weed, some drawing shit, and some haze. We got some drawing and some haze. Yo, I'll never forget, we go to the music hut, get, get the latest clue mixtape. Jump in the cab to the bus terminal, jump on the, at the, uh, Port Authority, GWB, shoot across and go to the plaza, Garden State Plaza, get the gas jeans, get some polo shit. Then it was like, all right, yo, I'll see you tomorrow. We go to school fresh. This is the picture for the first day of school. White t-shirts on. We both got on polo hats. He got on Jabos. I got on guest jeans. My cousin got on a polo sport fleece jacket. White t-shirt. White and black Air Forces. Guest jeans as well. He had the guest carpenters, right? Yo, we got out of school that day. He like, yo, fuck it. Let's go to Bloomingdale's. He go get the flag sweater. Somebody in his family was getting high. He steals the flag sweater. He buys another one. They still have one. He buys another one. Yo, he bought like three of them sweaters, yo. Which fast forward goes into this picture right here. That's the flag sweater and shit. But, yo, the mind frame that we was on at that time was different. It was always about setting trends. Like, shout out to Just C. I had a conversation with Just C because of some shit that I said. And my story about a picture of us in the rink where my man had on a Bobby Jones tennis jacket. And Jesse was like, you had to really be outside and on some shit to know what Bobby Jones was. So I'm like, yo, I got a picture of Hove with a Bobby Jones shirt on. So we would do shit like going to Neiman Marcus and look at shit that we knew people wasn't wearing, like Zinnia. Before we could pronounce it, we was calling it Zayne or some weird shit, buying it. Um, Bobby Jones, the golf shirts, Barry Brickin. Like, we was trying to find shit that looked real classy. Like, like we wanted to look like we was getting money on a different level and we was doing shit on a different level, which we actually was, especially for our age. It's some kids... But not in abundance like today that I can say during them times. They was doing certain shit on a certain level. And what I mean by that was like you being 16 going to the tunnel. You 16 in the Apollo. Like, yeah, if you was outside, outside, you was doing some of that shit. But like it was a small percentage, basically. Compared to the amount of peers we had at that time that was doing that. Like, I, I saw and I was at a lot of shit that a lot of people would think that, nah, this nigga's capping. Or if I went to school and talk about it, they would think I was capping. But I always went with older niggas from my hood. So they was able to, they would put it out there like, yo, this nigga was here last night. He was there. Or 
certain peers that was with other older niggas from the neighborhood, I would bump into them like state building when uh Raekwon and Biggie and all of them performed. I was out there. I left school early. If niggas said they was going to do that, I said, there's no way I'm going back to school today. I'm going with y'all niggas to, to that shit. Fuck school. So, during those times, I was able to be a part of a lot of shit that's uh, pretty much being cosplayed now. Or you got people that was of age but wasn't there and heard stories and are trying to paint the pictures about the shit but got the wrong brush and the wrong paint for the type of uh, canvas they're using. 